السلام عليكم جميعا يسعدني ويشرفني ان نلتقي بحضرتكم في محاضره اخرى في برنامجنا الجيست سبيكر سيمينار هذا البرنامج اللي انطلق من شعبه البحث والتطوير والذي يهدف الى تطوير و ابقاء تدريسي الجامعه التكنولوجيه مع المستوى العالي للبحوث في دول العالم المختلفه وكذلك ينمي عمليه الاطلاع على مستجدات الحركه العلميه ضيفنا لهذا اليوم دكتور ميثم هو خريج الجامعة التكنولوجية فيما يخص شهادة البكالوريوس وتم التواصل معه عبر دكتور سليم خليفة من قسم الهندسة السيطرة والنظم الشكر الجزيل لكل من ساهم بإعداد هذه المحاضرة دكتور ميثم أترك المحاضرة لحضرتك لتعرفنا قليلا عن نفسك ومن ثم الانتقال إلى مضمون محاضرة اليوم مشكور دكتور انجاز السلام عليكم ورحمه الله طبعا اسمحوا لي راح احكي بالانجليزي لانه ما راح اقدر اوفق يعني بين عربي وانجليزي احول على الترمز anyway so for as for today i'll be presenting an introductory lecture for internet of things So the title, as you can see, is Introduction to the Internet of Things as Technology and its Application. I am currently working uh, as assistant professor at the Uttar University in uh, Malaysia. And uh, I have graduated um, from uh, my BSc, actually. I graduated from uh, UOT, uh, from the Department of Control and Systems Engineering. And then I have traveled to the UK and they studied their um, hard diploma in IT uh, in Middlesex University in London itself. And after that, I traveled to, the, uh, to Malaysia and I carried on with my master's degree in information technology and then back to my uh, original field, which is electrical and electronics in the same university. In addition to my uh, main qualifications, uh, I have actually got some Uh, uh, professional, let's call it, of specialty qualifications from different universities or uh, some uh, companies. Uh, as uh, for example, here you can see um, I'm a specialized in Internet of uh, Things uh, from the University of California, uh, Irvine, in the USA, and then I am certified as well as a professional educator or innovative educator uh, by Microsoft USA. Okay. So uh, let's start talking about IoT, and we we can define IoT. Actually, uh, we can't find the definition on internet, but everyone will be talking, saying different uh, words about it. But anyway, at the end of the day, you will find that all of them they are going to tell the same context or the same concept, but but using different words. So here, uh, for example, I would say uh, Internet of Things is a concept of connecting objects with other objects and or with services via the Internet. So uh, first we have to know what are these objects, what kind of objects we are connecting. And uh, when we say Internet, are we talking about uh, Google.com, Yahoo.com, or what was the meaning? Because nowadays when we say Internet, um, the first thing comes to your mind, Google. <laughs> Right, so uh, we have to understand what what's the meaning of Internet of Things, and uh, what's wrong with the current Internet, so that we have to come up with Internet of Things. The concept or the naming of Internet of Things was firstly introduced by uh, a British technology pioneer named Kevin Ashton, in uh, somewhere in 1999. However, uh, that does not mean Internet of Things uh, came up on his hand. In fact, uh, he is the one who introduced the term IoT. But actually, before that, there were some applications and some projects related to IoT. But at that time, it was not named as IoT. Yeah? Uh, but anyway, uh, this guy, uh, Kevin Ashton, in fact, he has uh, some really uh, interesting publications in terms of books and papers 
So whoever wants to get good foundation about IoT, then uh, I would recommend that you go seek for his uh, uh, publications. Okay, and the best, the best way to study anything is basically to understand first the terminology of why it's called like that, yeah? So here we are trying to study Internet of Things. So there are two terms here. Before we understand the whole term as one term, we have to understand the subterms, which are Internet, and then another term is Things. So Internet is itself, it's subdivided into two parts. Inter means between. Net is just a short for network. So here, just saying like um, network of networks. This is the, the translation of it. Sometimes it's called as the global network. Yeah, But let's focus on the previous naming, which is network of networks. And keep this on mind. The other part is things. What are these things? So when we say internet nowadays, we're just talking about internet, we will think about connecting our PC to uh, a server, maybe somewhere on the, uh, on the internet side. And then uh, maybe from there, uh, I forward my messages, those will be sent to uh, other computers, something like that. But here we are saying internet of things. So what are these things? We have to understand the word things. There must be something different about it. So objects, actually, uh, things are objects with interesting data, called as IoT devices. Yeah? Uh, what's the meaning object with interesting data? Well, that depends on the application we are working on. If, let's say, if we are working on uh, healthcare, yeah, to monitor the health of old people, let's say, or some sick people, so here, what kind of data we are interested in to collect from that person? Then these are uh, the interesting data. So the human being or the patient will be the, that object we are interested in to collect the data from. And these objects, you can see, it can be seriously anything. Anything uh, can be human, can be a phone, can be a car, can be a dog, can be a light, can be anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we are, for example, uh, we want to create an application for positioning stolen cars, then our object will be the car itself. What kind of interesting data we are seeking for? The position, the coordinate, the GPS coordinates, right? The same if we are looking for lost dog or lost pets, then same thing. There is uh, the, the object will be the dog, and the data we are interested in are the position coordinates, and so on. Yeah? Uh, I will come to give you actually quite um, a long list of examples uh, through the um, lecture. But whatever list of examples we are going to talk about, we will not be able to cover all the examples available around the world. And you will see why, actually. Because it's very wide, well, a very wide open area. IoT areas. Uh, you know, when you study papers or uh, publications, let's call them publications, around the Internet, you will find uh, some people say, OK, I'm going to do something related to, or some application related to home some other related to transport, uh, community, and so on. Maybe if you study some surveys about IoT, then you, they will tell you uh, these are the areas, home, transport, community, national, industries, uh, and so on. Yeah? So maybe they will list down up to 10 areas. But let, take it from me. It's really unlimited areas. There are unlimited areas for IoT. IoT, in fact, can be implemented everywhere. Uh, as you will see in our examples, uh, these, these applications actually, they are just like, uh, just very few, just very few out of millions maybe out there. 
Yeah. So here, when we say, for example, home, the IoT area at home. Home what? Home security we want to focus on, or we are interested in home health, for example, or the entertainment side, the side the house, or utilities and appliances. So which application you want to go to? All of them are under home. And sure, there are others as well we can do inside the home. When we move to transport, what you want to do? You want to trace your uh, ambulance cars, where are they? Uh, you want to organize uh, your traffic or logistics or highway and so on. Yeah. So again, in addition to these, you will find maybe tens or hundreds of other applications besides what I listed here. So let's jump directly to the uh, examples of uh, real examples, real projects. Those have been implemented either here in Malaysia uh, under my supervision or under other people's supervision. Um, like this, for example, this uh, project, University Attendance System. The university have implanted some RF, RFID detectors in classes. So every class will have some detector, most probably nearby the door. And then uh, there is uh, a central attendance system at the Ministry of Education or Ministry of Higher Education. So this system was created actually to trace how much percent the attendance of the students per year or per course. Why is that? Uh, because at some point of time, they discover that there are some students, international students, they are registering in some university as students, but actually they are doing some black market jobs in Malaysia. And they are not really attending the classes. They are just paying the fees, but they are not attending. So to solve that, they created this system. So anyway, uh, the, the students will attend the classes. That will be detected by our sensors here. Then these sensors, they will forward the messages to the internet. And from the internet, uh, the data will be retrieved by the central attendance system at the ministry. And finally, make a report for the uh, admins. <clears throat> so this is one of the applications. This is just one of the applications. But similarly, you can, you, maybe the similar, I mean, uh, structure you can use by placing, uh, let's say, uh, these sensors at the parking to detect the stuff when they come in, when they go out, for example. So it's the same concept. Here, instead of students, it will be staff. And the, the place where we set these sensors will be at the parking lot. Those sensors will detect the staff IDs or RFIDs, and then forward the, the data to the internet through specific protocols. Um, and then after that, they will be forwarded to maybe our management, the university management. And they will see if there is someone late for the job or uh, uh, what they call, maybe they don't even attend the job. Yeah. Another field, healthcare. So healthcare, here we have patients. And these patients, uh, they really need to, um, to be monitored in terms of maybe blood pressure, uh, heartbeat, uh, and maybe some other things you want, they want to detect. So they will be wearing some uh, devices. Can be just like a watch, um, wrist, wristband watch, or uh, can be um, st stack patches nearby the heart. Yeah. And then uh, these sensors, they will be uh, detecting or reading the data from the body and forwarding them to the internet through specific protocols related for IoT specifically for IoT. And then those data will be forwarded to the doctors of the patient. At the same time, it will be sent maybe to a health center so that they will analyze uh, the data and send some reports to the doctors saying maybe to take action or maybe just for the records, to keep it for records. Again, this is just one example in healthcare, but there are ton, uh, tons of them there. 
smart homes. Nowadays, uh, this smart home is really bombing out. I don't know why. Uh, wherever we go, actually, we can see people installing these smart home things. Okay, uh, one example here. Um, you, when you leave your house in the morning, what will you do? First, you will shut down everything, right? Shut down the fan, shut down the light and everything, aircon, and then leave, right? Which will take from you maybe some one minute or about that. They said, okay, why don't we create some system? That system will be installed near the, the main power switch, and it will control the uh, electrical appliances uh, based on some signals sent by another device placed in the car. So when the person is leaving the house and that is detected by the onboard device, then the house device or in-house device will start shutting down the appliances one by one. So no need for us to, uh, to shut down these manually. Well, uh, I find it it's for lazy people, but <laughs> anyway, but it's working. Anyway, a lot of people actually uh, installing this. And the other way around as well, when the house is already empty and no one is there, and now I'm leaving my office towards my house, then my onboard device will send data to the in-house device telling that I am on my way, so turn on the appliances. So maybe when we reach around 10 minutes away from the house, the in-house device will turn on the air con so it will prepare the, you know, the air, the cool air for you, uh, maybe lights, maybe the garage uh, door, and so on. So there are many appliances actually we can control, uh, water heater, rice cooker, and so on. Okay, my smart room. Um, this is one of the applications that uh, my students actually have done before. It's a simple application for the university hostel. Uh, so they said like every student has his or her own um, room in the hostel. And sometimes because they are rushing uh, toward uh, the lecture or they are late for anything, then uh, they might forget to, to shut down the... Um, fan or lock the door or the lights. So uh, they said, basically, let's create some kind of device that will control these appliances wherever we are. As long as we have internet connection, then we can control these appliances from far away. And uh, it's done because with simple, actually, with very simple uh, ingredients or components. Yeah, it's already done. Uh, they just use some uh, third-party, actually, application here. And uh, after that, they created some uh, circuit, simple circuit. It's, um, they are using, actually, at Meg. This is a, actually, not a Q. This is written wrongly. It's at Mega, at Mega uh, 328 a microcontroller, or what's called at Arduino. Yeah? I'm sure uh, many of you have heard of. And then they set... Uh, this device near the main power switch of the room. And they do the proper wiring so they could control the speed of the fan, whether it's on or off, or even the speed of it. I mean, whether it's uh, level one, two, three. Uh, the door, whether it's locked or not, we can control it. And the brightness of the light as well, whether we want to save electricity or something. Yeah. So here in the application, there are some modes, ready modes, like for example, sleeping mode. If they click on sleep, what they want to do in sleep while sleeping? Basically, they want to shut down the light, lock the door, turn on the fan, right? So they don't need to press these three as well uh, buttons here to control. They will just select sleeping. Then that procedure will be done automatically. Or... Uh, any other procedure, you can program it uh, simply. Smart shopping. Okay, this is real application in Korea. It's, uh, you know, in Korea, actually, people using um, 
uh, not only Korea actually, <laughs> but many, many countries, but speci specifically Korea, uh, their number is big and uh, huge, and then they don't really use cars because it's expensive in terms of petrol, parking, and so on. So majority of people, they tend to use public transport, like buses or trains. So while they are waiting for their train or bus, there are some screens placed at the bus station or train station showing products, uh, such as grocery products or whatever products they have. So these people, while they are waiting for the train or the bus, they will start scanning the QR codes of the products and the quantity they key in, how much quantity they need. So that list of items will be sent to the grocery shop until they reach to home the supermarket will be sending or delivering these items to the house. <clears throat> Smart agriculture. This is another uh, application uh, one of my students have done lately, I think uh, just, just before um, we get uh, COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, we have like, uh, nowadays the farms, they have sensors placed at specific places with a specific distance. Those must be measured somehow. And then um, these sensors, they will, uh, de they will just check or detect whether the soil is dry or wet, whether humidity, uh, fertilizer, whether it's enough or not, the, the ground, whether it's uh, acidic or salty or how is it. So all this information will be forwarded to the farmer or farming uh, farm manager. At the same time, it will be sent, some signal with a specific request will be sent to a drone. This drone basically has uh, a tank, one for water and another tank for fertilizer. And uh, let's say this sensor here, send the request. So its position will be sent beside the request or the status. Based on that, the agricultural drone will travel by itself. No one will run it. By itself, it will turn on and travel to that point and start dropping the fertilizer or uh, the water. So this one of the uh, applications actually done last um, one year and a half about. Uh, nowadays as well, this one is becoming very famous, a smart uh, hydroponic farming. Uh, well, uh, I'm not really very uh, knowledgeable about it, but mm, my students, they studied about and they said, okay, um, why don't we just do it? Uh, we control actually the fluid uh, for this or the, what they call it? Uh, yeah, the water and the fertilizer for this hydroponic. So when I see, what is it? Actually, these are just empty pipes. Uh, and they have, these pipes, they have some liquid, uh, which contains fertilizer, uh, some minerals, and water for sure. There is no soil actually here. There is no soil at all. So what they said, all we need to do is, we program our device here, or our application, sorry. And then that application will control the water pump and the lighting for these racks. And uh, let's say uh, there is low uh, water in this place or there is low salt in the water. That will be reported. And then from here, manually we can control to turn on the salt or the fertilizer. We can choose what we want. So you see here, we can control actually the base liquid flow uh, the fertilizer amount, the light brightness, whether it's very strong or lighter, the air temperature, and its humidity. You see, I am not related. I am not a person who is uh, uh, related to farming. You know, I, I never did farming actually in my life. But you see, even though I am not related, I'm still uh, productive in terms of uh, controlling these things. Why? I'm, because the job I'm doing is not related to the plant itself, it's related to the flow, or some water flow. 
or some liquid flow? Well, that can be controlled by water pump. And the water pump connected to some uh, microcontroller, and then I connect to internet. From here, it's my field, <laughs> yeah? But I am not really related to the planting. So I can replace this plant with anything. You yourself, you can do so. You can replace this plant with anything. Just you need to proper programming for it, and there you go. Another project of mine, um, my students actually, not mine, uh, my students, is um, poisonous gas leakage detection uh, in laboratories. Uh, actually, this uh, project was triggered because of an incident that happened in University Technology Petronas, where I worked before. Uh, there were some students, high, uh, higher, um, what they call postgraduate students, he fainted in the lab because there was some poisonous gas leakage, but he does not feel it because it, the gas has no smell. So um, what happened is, luckily, his friend was on the way to the lab. He found him, then he applied the HSE uh, procedure, then called for help. Uh, so anyway, when I heard about this incident, immediately the idea came to my mind. So I asked my students to do such thing. Uh, again, it's the same micro, I, you can see most of the time I'm using uh, Atmega 328 microcontroller or Arduino, but it's not the only one we can use. Actually, there are many others, uh, but this is very cheap and um, well, you know, for students we have very limited resources, right? So anyway, um, so I, here we connected this uh, microcontroller into different set of gas sensors, one to control the LPG, um, liquid, liquefied petroleum gas, and the other was, um, I think ammonia it was or something, yeah. So this, uh, we connected to this uh, at MEG, and then after that, some reading will be sent to our uh, control room dashboard, where they can see how much person of the gas is being uh, uh, emitted, or how much, how much, what's the amount of gas being emitted actually currently, and at the same time, it's recording the history of the emission for each gas, yeah? <clears throat> okay, so you can see all these, all these uh, applications I have talked about, I, I don't know how many, how, they were around 10 or something. I did not really cover anything compared to the world. The world is really running very wild in this uh, field. Uh, later, I will uh, tell you about something maybe you can watch uh, related to this matter. So anyway, uh, all these communications, all these communications uh, are meant to be done between things. And we said nowadays, things is the number of things is increasing so there must be some kind of uh, new protocols to be implemented yeah so first let's see what iot connectivity models are and then we see what kind of technology is supposed to be there so here iot actually uses four models of connectivity as you can see here so let's look to one by one Device-to-device -device communication, where currently we are using this, I mean, like a Bluetooth or Zigbee between devices, right? Uh, like, for example, let's look to this side, yeah? Uh, I'm wearing, for example, my uh, watch, and that watch uh, connects to my phone. So while I'm walking, it will detect my heartbeat and everything. Then it will send the records to the phone where the data will be kept. So all my data will be kept here. When I go to visit my doctor and he asks me, what did you do? How did you walk or not? Uh, how was your heart beat? Well, for me as a human, I don't really know whether my heartbeat is increased or decreased on when. So all I have to do, I go to my phone, I show to the, my doctor, these are my records. Then he will look and see whether good or not or need some action. Yeah. So anyway, um, so this device by device communication. 
can be any, any of the communications, the legacy communications. There is nothing new actually about it. There is another one called device to cloud communication model. Now we are connecting our devices, our things to cloud, to a cloud. <laughs> so here, for example, some sensor or data source, by the way, here, not necessarily a sensor, can be a data source, something generate data by itself, yeah? Uh, that, that sensor or the data source will upload data via Wi-Fi, let's say, to the cloud. And then from there, these data can be pushed to devices automatically. When we say pushing data, it means automatically done or by request on demand user. So the user will send a query for data and receiving those data uh, to his phone or laptop. So anyway, so this kind of communication we call device to cloud. And then there is device to gateway model. Okay. This one, we need actually something new about it. Why is that? Because even though we have at home gateways, um, maybe most of, most of you have internet at home, uh, so your laptops will be connecting to some central device we call a router, and that router act as the gateway to the internet. So this gateway uh, will not be sufficient for internet of things. Why? Because the number of the things will be very much more than nowadays. Like that router in your house, maybe it will allow you to connect uh, four or eight devices maximum. It cannot allow you to connect more than that. But the new model must allow as many devices as it could be. Yeah? So this central centralized device can be a computer, can be the phone itself. The, your phone itself can be a gateway to other devices. Yeah? Let's say the example just now I told you, my, my watch connected to the phone. So my watch will send data to the phone and the phone acts as the gateway to the cloud. And maybe there are tens of sensors around me. So my device, my, uh, device will act as the gateway to forward these data to the cloud. So this is the same example I mentioned just now. The connection between uh, the gateway and the sensors can be IP or non-IP communication, whether it's uh, normal IP communication, Wi-Fi, or it can be uh, Bluetooth communication, yeah, non-IPs. But the communication between the gateway and the internet or the cloud must be uh, internet protocol, some I IP. Why? Because my phone will be seen by the uh, global network. The last side is called, uh, or the last model, sorry, not side. The last model called back-end data sharing model. Uh, this one as well, uh, in, I, in IoT, it was introduced, or just before IoT. We, at that time, they call it web services, yeah? So now with IoT, um, we have, let's say, one IoT device here, another one here, and there is a service, uh, some service provided by this server connected to a cloud as well, and a group of services connected to another cloud, and then there is, uh, they are connected, these clouds, via the internet. So here, uh, what's happening is, when, I, when I'm, let's say, standing here, asking for a specific service from this cloud, but this cloud does not provide that service, then the cloud itself will communicate with another cloud over the internet to get the service for me. When the server replies back, that cloud will communicate at the back end with, the, with my cloud and then forward to me the uh, service. Uh, by the way, uh, it's a common question. Many people uh, asked before about this. What's the difference between cloud and internet? Actually, cloud itself is uh, 
a service that is running over the internet. But the internet is the network that connects these clouds, that connects these networks. Remember I said internet is the network of networks at the beginning. So these are the small networks. These are the small networks. Another small network, another small network. These networks are connected via the internet. So internet is the connectivity. Clouds are the services. Yeah. If we look to the uh, DIKW pyramid, uh, you can see here, there is data. Above data, there is information, then knowledge, then wisdom. In other words, data is a very abstract set of, uh, of um, digits, let's say. Yeah? So these data are being collected by the IoT devices. Like, for example, uh, I'm collect collecting the temperature of uh, some patient. So if you collect, collect the temperature from 10 patients, at the end of the day, you will get an array of numbers, right? Each number is temperature of a different patient, right? So this one, we call it data. But then after that, how can I make the use of the data so that I can produce an information? The information is based on these data. I can say most of the people are uh, cured. They don't have COVID-19. They don't have fever, let's say. Yeah. So I can say 100% of the people are safe based on the data. But data alone, just as numbers, make no sense, right? IoT, where IoT reside in this? IoT reside in collecting data and partially making information out of those data, partially. But with the help of machine learning, nowadays, we can create full set of information and knowledge. Yeah? So I will not really cover the up ones, but I can just tell you, um, machine learning and IoT can create information. Machine learning with deep learning, they can go upper here. Yeah? So all together, we call it big data. All of this, we call it big data. The big data field is not about just analyzing the data and how can I uh, make use of the data. Making use is just part, like here, what I said. How can I make use of the data by making information and then change the information into knowledge and then into wisdom? So these are just parts. But collecting the data itself is part of the big data. How can I collect the data? Where can I store them? Yeah, because they are a huge amount of data. If, let's say, uh, as we are now in a COVID-19 pandemic, so maybe we want to collect data about all the citizens, let's say, in Baghdad. Yeah? Uh, where shall we save all their data? That must be a uh, concern of big data. Uh, how can we make backup for these data? How can we make sure that these data are accessible by some, uh, I don't know, some algorithms or some mechanisms uh, 24 over 7? Yeah, 24 uh, over 7. So all these are big data related. Okay. Uh, the current wireless technologies that we are using, which is Wi-Fi, uh, majorly Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and so on, they might not be sufficient after 10 years, around 10 years from now. Why is that? Because the number con of the connected things or devices, IoT devices, is expected to be or to reach 125 billion device, devices in 2030. Yeah? Can you imagine the, 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 the number? So if you just think about it, what, how I explained just now to you from the application, one person can have a phone, a watch, uh, maybe glasses it will be soon, a laptop, um, what else, a tablet maybe, all these actually things. So one person will have 
or will need actually uh, many IPs, many, uh, uh, they will have many, <laughs> many source of data to produce. So here you can see <clears throat> 125 billion actually is not really something uh, little. We are only 7.2 billion. So you can divide and see how many devices per person. So anyway, so because of this number, huge number of devices, we will need actually better protocols, communication protocols, than the existing ones. These are the first initiatives of IoT. The first one was this one, narrowband IoT. Then after that, LoRa and Sigfox, they came almost together, and they're still actually in research, both of them. Yeah? Uh, this one kind of dying somehow dying yeah but LoRa and Sigfox is still uh, now in research even though there are some papers claim that these are already standards but actually they are not anyway if you read if you want to read more about the uh, these protocols you may read on this um, what they call it uh, URL yeah IoT standards I can tell you from now, there is nothing called IoT standards. All of them, everyone is claiming to be the standard, so that grasp a lot of people to use it. So here, for example, application protocols. These are the five available ones, or the most famous ones, let's say. Each of them claim to be the standard, but actually the worldwide community does not recognize, until now, did not recognize any of them as a standard. My applications that I ask my students to do, I ask them to do this, uh, use it, uh, MQTT, we call it, yeah? Uh, why? Because for me, I know some uh, service which provide this protocol, so I ask them to use this. But actually, there are others beside it, yeah? Uh, which one will be the leader, uh, we don't know until now, but soon should be revealed. Uh, there are other uh, service discovery protocols as well. The previous ones, uh, the previous ones will be obsolete soon. So there are new names coming uh, soon, and they're still under research. You may read actually about these standards, okay? And this uh, on this website, this website, in fact, it always uh, updates um, the information. That's why I always follow the information from this website. But actually, there are tens of others. Yeah? Challenges. Uh, if you want to do research in IoT, search for challenges. These challenges of IoT, you can see how many, because IoT is still considered new. Even though there are a lot of applications, but these applications lack for many things, for example, security, yeah? Uh, until now, there is no robust uh, security scheme that protects my data. You saw that my data are being sent to the internet without any security, actually. So, especially security is a huge uh, gap. But others as well, yeah? Availability, reliability, and so on. So you may actually read survey papers about these, or you may just Google, for example, IoT availability challenges and read about that gap only. Yeah? Another thing I want to leave you with to read is some keywords, those related to the current uh, era of IoT technology. Um, definitely, I cannot cover all in one lecture. No one, I think, does. Uh, but anyway, uh, I will leave you with this, so yeah, maybe you can study about each of them, at least definition, what it means, uh, and so on. Like you see, for example, there is something called SOTA, Software on Air. Uh, what is that? Yeah? Uh, IPSO, Internet Protocol for Smart Project. What is that? So at least uh, when you go to do your um, research or you want to study maybe um, about IoT, you have some idea about these. And by the way, uh, I don't know why I put it here in the middle, but it should be somewhere here written big, 5G. 5G is actually uh, is the upcoming technology of connectivity. 
so I think this is really important uh, uh, keyword to study about, actually. So I will leave it for you. At least you can Google it and uh, search for it. Okay. Uh, from time to time, actually, I'm running uh, some channel uh, for technology. So that actually, from time to time, I give some um, videos. I show some videos. I share maybe I do the video or uh, I I capture it from somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, after sure asking for their copyrights allowance. So uh, the videos is not like five minutes, 10 minutes. Definitely it's not. It's at least one hour or 45 minutes. So all the videos related to technology. So maybe you can follow there and uh, you can watch the um, programs. So that's all what I wanted to share with you for today. Uh, I hope it's, it was beneficial for you somehow at least to spark some ideas about uh, IoT and the new technology, so that I hope you, now you are eager to go and study after the lecture um, <laughs> some more about the current technology. So I am uh, happy to answer any questions, if there are any. Shukran Jazeelan, Doctor. Shukran for this this يعني أنا صحيح اختصاصي بالحراريات والطاقة الح... يعني الأبحاث الحرارية حقيقة هذا المجال شئنا أم أبينا هو اللي حيسود أو يطغي بالحقيقة أنا عندي تعليق قبل ما أترك المجال الزملائي للسؤال هو في الحقيقة هذا المجال تطبيقه راح يكون يعني انعكاسه إيجابي جدا على كل من يدرس الديب ليرنينج لأنه الداتا سيت اللي هو دائما يبحث عنها راح تكون always available وبدون ما يعني هذا هذا هو أهم شيء يعني راح يستفاد من عنده كل علوم الحاسبات بمختلف مجالاتها صراحة يعني توفير ما يسمى بالداتا سيت. Uh, I agree with you دكتور دكتور أمجد. Uh, actually actually like this. Um, you see IoT job as I mentioned just now the job of IoT is to collect the data. So yeah. nowadays, when we do research and we search for set data set to do our uh, project, it might be very difficult to find the data. But mm -hmm. I guess soon data will be very cheap. <laughs> I think so. And yeah. available. Not available. just cheap. Yeah. Cheap and available. I يعني هو احنا لسه حاليا سوينا محاضرة بالديب ليرنينج محاضرتين تقريبا سو سويت من دكاترة من أمريكا. وايضا من استراليا طلبوا الساده الحضور التدريسيين طلبوا لينك حتى يحصلون على الداتا سيت الافيلبل حتى يقدرون يشتغلون اذا تعممت هذه الفكره وقدروا كل الاختصاصات قدرت تعمل على انه تنشئ داتا ترفع على الانترنت راح يكون هذا فشيء كلش يعني متوفر انا اترك المجال لزملائي راح ابتدي مع ست ابتسام رحيم تفضلي السلام عليكم عليكم السلام ورحمة الله I would like to get many thanks for Dr. Maytham for this nice lecture it really summarized everything about Internet of Things but I would like to ask two questions where can I put the age computer uh, according to what you say, there uh, for for model for models for uh, connectivity for Internet of Things, and uh, the second point, uh, there is uh, in fact now uh, many research towards uh, version uh, two Internet of Things that's related uh, the uh, the problem of connectivity to solve it by five G. Uh, so uh, I don't know if there is um, uh, latency now with uh, devices to device is enough to um, make the data or the uh, gather information uh, to respond as um, uh, fast uh, accept, accepted or different. And uh, that's what I like to know about uh, this topic. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sam. So uh, just I want to clarify about the first question. Uh, you said the one in, um, let me just run it here. Um, you said which model you asked for? Uh, 
uh, age computer because uh, you already classified the connectivity for models for Internet of Things. But nowadays, yeah. to uh, make the information available in fast way and make the respond of devices as a latency mm -hmm. uh, parameter for each device is more, it will be helped by age computer. This uh, concept uh, make information uh, more requests available in server uh, and uh, to be handled uh, direct to the user. OK. OK. So. Uh, I, if I understood your question correctly, so this one uh, basically where each computer will be placed so that it can respond as fast as possible. Exactly, right? yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's why I said uh, here that we need actually a new set of protocols. Uh, let me show. Okay, first, these are the ones, the wireless protocols or technologies. Uh, soon, we might not use Wi-Fi anymore for connecting the things. We will be using LoRa or Sigfox. Yes. In addition to that, you can see uh, the the routing protocols in between. All these are different than nowadays ones. Why is that? Exactly the point you touch. Latency, because if there are uh, nowadays if there are hundreds of devices communicating with each other, then the current protocols like ERGB or uh, um, forgot, like uh, SRTP, for example, all these, they will manage, they will be able to manage. But if instead of 100 devices, there are thousands of them, definitely the current protocols are not designed to manage such huge amounts of devices. This is why uh, I mentioned that we need to new standards. Yeah? So, yes. Uh, yeah, so these are standards, in fact, in fact, uh, part of it, part, um, like some of it, as what I mentioned, are here. And the 5G is the big picture of these uh, technologies. Yeah, just like uh, now I, when I mentioned, like uh, IoT is the big picture for uh, device communications, right? The new big picture for device connection, the connection, how the connecting will be, that's 5G. That's why the 5G that they claim to be super, super duper. Uh, fast, but I I don't know until now. They said that uh, it will be like uh, they claim some huge numbers. To be honest, uh, different website they claim different numbers, but I don't know if they can achieve it. But maybe they did. I, I'm not sure to be honest with you. Yeah, but anyway. So uh, answering your question, uh, 5G protocols and the new protocols are in need actually to achieve uh, the main purpose of IoT uh, and reduce the latency basically. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you for Dr. Haytham Abbas for this. A nice lecture. I think the attendees look for a specific subject from the lectures. Uh, Sorry, just have... uh, Okay, thank you for uh, Dr. Abbas for this uh, lecture. Nice. I think the attendees look for a specific uh, subject. Uh, and I have some questions about this uh, uh, lecture. Uh, the first uh, question is uh, the Internet of Things technology really used in the smart e learning? This is the first question. And the second question what are the uh, trends and the future opportunities to uh, anticipate? in e-learning. And the third uh, note is there are a real application used in the smart e-learning. Uh, are there university, universities that use inter, uh, Internet of Things now? Uh, please, you can name this university if uh, it's used in this, in this university, Dr. Abbas. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Rahim. So, uh, actually, frankly speaking, the first question I did not hear it very well, but the second uh, I hear it uh, clear. Uh, maybe you can just type it, uh, Dr. Amjad, if you hear the question, maybe you can type the first question. Uh, uh -huh. But anyway, I will answer for the second uh, one first, yeah? Uh huh. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Rahim asked me if there is some university have applied uh, what's called as uh, smart e-learning um, and what's the name of the university right uh, frankly yeah. speaking i do not, i do not know the name of the university but i know it's a chinese university uh, not the university school sorry school uh, this is school in fact they are uh, using some kind of um, uh, euro device they put on the head of the student which has three sensors one at the at the front and two behind so that uh, these, device, these, these devices will be placed on every student during the class time. And then the teacher will have the dashboard to check which student is focusing and which one is not focusing at that uh, moment in the class. That's, that's number one. Uh, based on that uh, focus and everything, the data, the history of the data will be sent to the uh, mobile of the parents. I'm sure, I mean, they have to install some application, not really like SMS, no. But they have some application. They can monitor the performance of their, of their children in terms of focusing. Yeah, not really as marks, but in terms of focusing. In addition to that, uh, if we are talking about marks, then nowadays, actually, I think, I think most of the uh, Western universities, and definitely China, because China nowadays is the leading in uh, IoT, uh, they are using actually this performance uh, live uh, or live performance uh, delivery or something like that. So every student will be able to follow up his attendance percentage, uh, his um, maybe marks and so on. Yeah. Uh, one of the um, one of the application I showed to you just now, I think it was the first example, university attendance uh, system. This one actually real, uh, real application in my previous, two previous universities actually, yeah. Uh, the students will be able to see how much percent they are, uh, they have attended the classes. Uh, the parents will be able to see that as well, just in case the son say, or the daughter will say, uh, we are going to the university, but actually they are going to the cafeteria or something like that. Yeah, uh, everything will be actually reported through IoT basically, yeah. But again, uh, nowadays, because the, the technology we are using nowadays is sufficient to, to manage these little number of things, of devices, like how many devices the students have. But in the near future, they want actually um, every person, whether he's student or non-student, maybe any, any uh, any uh, alive creature to have uh, internet of thing device somehow connected to him or her yeah so uh, i hope that answer your second question um dr amjad did you capture the first question uh, i will ask uh, dr rahim to type it on the chat so please dr rahim if you can uh, retype your question or type your question in the chat uh, chat bar so i can like take it uh, and also Dr. Maytham can uh, uh, have a look. Antaqil uh, ila Vari, Staff Vari Ali. Staff Vari, Tismani. Thank you so much for this uh, lecture. Uh, uh, but I have one question, if possible. As you know, uh, Dr. Mitham, uh, all the devices in IoT working with the platform. Someone, it's developed some private or some company developed some kind of platform for these devices. And the capability, they say more than one million, it can work with this platform. In which way, as uh, we are in the research part, we can test this kind of platform. It can be 
work with the, in the sufficient way, it can work with the uh, 1 million or more than 1 million devices. Is there any way to test this kind of a platform? Thank you so much. Okay, uh, Dari, um, just uh, ask this question, um, if I understood it correctly. Yeah? Uh, there is some kind of platform uh, claiming that uh, it can manage 100, up to 100, uh, uh, one, sorry, 1 million or 100 million, you said? Yeah, uh, yeah one, one, million. 1 million or more than 1 million. Um, so about, about 1 million devices at the same time, right? It's right, yes, exactly. Okay, may I know the name of the platform? There are different uh, platforms from the private company. They are, they say, uh, uh, right now I don't have it. Exactly, oh, I see, but I, I see. read from the research. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, there is some kind of a private company, as you know, the, some kind of private company cannot provide you the uh, code or the, Definitely. it cannot be open source. So mm. when you say I have this platform and you need to check the scalability and uh, uh, the performance of these devices in the same time, mm. uh, uh, how is there any way to check it? Is there any kind of, uh, for example, uh, uh, virtual or this is as a reality? Mm. It can be one million can be can be working in the same time with the in the platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, according to my knowledge, uh, if we have some platform or some um, some entity that we have, we don't have its own coding, and we don't know the details of it, then we all we can do is to test it as black box. We apply, we implement black box testing on it. But to do so, it means you have to buy the license at least, and then you must have. Uh, 1 million devices. But these 1 million devices, you can simulate them somehow uh, using some networking, uh, what they call it, uh, some networking simulators. Uh, I'm not really sure about MATLAB, but it's the strongest anyway. Uh, but you can see um, uh, there was Manet, for example, one of them. Um, what was the other one? NS, NS simulator. I, it's open source NS3 simulator. Or, or, yeah, NS3 yes. or NS2. Yeah. I think you can, yeah, I think you can use that actually to simulate. But as, again, you, you are simulating the devices, the million devices, and they all have to generate data at the same time to a black box. That black box is basically the platform that you, uh, you were talking about just now. And sure, you have to purchase the platform because you cannot really just uh, use a trial. I, I don't think they will allow that anyway. Uh, and then see the results, whether it's really matching in terms of latency, in terms of error percentage, um, delivery, yeah, delivery um, rate. Uh, you have to do this basic networking analysis and see. Um, other than that, I cannot see any way because you don't have the code of it anyway. The other way, if you, if you can ha have the code, then you may go manually and you go thoroughly the code and see the, the uh, equations. And then you calculate by hand. If you are really investigating that platform, I mean, yeah? Then you have to go and investigate manually and you do the calculation by hand. Then you will see actually what's the um, result from that. But I can tell you one thing as well. Uh, most of these uh, companies, especially private companies, I mean, when I say private, I mean they are not the inter they don't belong to the international community of internet or something. They claim anything. <laughs> they might claim one million, but they don't tell you that one million. If they send one kilobyte, <laughs> for example, one kilobyte or maybe ten bytes uh, at the same time, maybe. So if you run proper data, pictures or videos or something, then definitely they will not reach million. If there are, then they will be leading the internet world, actually. <laughs> you, you get what I mean, right? Yes, exactly, yes, yes, this yeah. is actually. Yeah. Okay, I hope so then, uh, your question. Thank you so much. 
اوكي مضبوط كان شكرا جزيلا شكرا اذا دكتور تقدر تطلع بالشات على سؤال استاذ رحيم اوكي وين الشات اه انا اقدر اقرا لك اياه ثانكس فور ثانكس دكتور ميثم فور ذا نايس ليكتشر اي ثينك ذا Look for a specific subject is the Internet of Things technology really used in smart e-learning? What are the trends and the future opportunities to invest in, invest in e-learning? Is there a real application used in smart e-learning? Are there universities that use IoT? Can you name the universities? I think the last... Uh, Part of the questions you already uh, answered. Okay. Uh, the first okay. one. Uh, the first one is is uh, is the Internet of Things and technology, technology really and is smart e-learning. Smart e-learning. Uh, mm -hmm. As I mentioned, yes, it is definitely it is. Uh, you see, IoT does not come just like um, a, um, a phone and a computer, laptop, and they will start communicating. Definitely, it will come with sensors. And these sensors, there are tons of them. Uh, whether you wanted to get uh, a sensor to, uh, for temperature, I mean, or sensor for humidity, or a sensor for the uh, nerve, as I mentioned in the example just now, uh, another for heartbeats, uh, maybe position, or whatever. There are tons of them, right? So depends on the application you are aiming for. You can choose the correct answer, uh, the correct sensors, and then um, you program them somehow using some microcontroller thing, and then you can just use it, yeah? So here, is it really used in uh, IoT in e-learning? Definitely, and the example I just gave to you in terms of, um, uh, what they call it, uh, China, the Chinese example, yeah? Um, what are the trends and the future opportunities to invest in e-learning? Okay, this is difficult to say. Uh, this is difficult to answer. <laughs> okay, there are a lot actually of, of ideas because what you are asking is um, what are the trends and future opportunities? When we say opportunities, we are talking about challenges. Uh, ideas are there. Millions of ideas are there. You can see even science fiction movies, right? But are we going to, are we able to do it? <laughs> that's, that's the uh, main concern. So yes, Opportunity uh, trends and future opportunities definitely available, but how near that future is? Is it nowadays future or really far future? <laughs> yeah. So I believe I believe uh, my my personal view. I think with the current e-learning, it's already um, somehow saturated at its own level. But if we are follow if we follow the steps of China in uh, using more deep sensors like the neuro sensor and these things, then definitely there are a huge, um, uh, what they call it, um, huge opportunities, a huge list of opportunities, actually. I can tell you one thing as well. Uh, last one year and a half, I, uh, I don't know, somehow um, I forgot how I got this interest in uh, autistic people, those people who have autism. So how to teach them, how to teach these autistic people? Um, after I visited some uh, autism center and then I saw how these students behave and uh, how they learn, I found that every autistic person, even though they are staying in the same center, but each of them have different learning style. One of them, for example, learn by voice. He might, you might see him playing here and there, but he is listening actually to what you are saying as a lecturer. The other might be looking at you, but he is thinking somewhere in China. <laughs> yeah, so this is the thing. How can we discover? Uh, zoom the rhythm... in that space. Sorry? Uh, they call it zoom, zooming at the space. Yeah, <laughs> something like that, yes. So the thing is, how can we measure or detect the rhythm of every student of yeah so let's say this is student he learned by voice this one by picture this one by different things currently it's being done manually 
but maybe in the near future, uh, with the concept of the Chinese uh, application just now using some neural re related uh, sensors, we will be able to detect automatically. You know what I, what I mean, uh, doctor? So definitely there are a lot of opportunities and gaps in e-learning. So I, I hope this will help actually in autism as well. Definitely, I think it will, yeah. Shukran Jazeel and Doctor. Thanks. Yeah. Shukran Jazeel and Doctor. Let me explain the importance of this topic. We are in the group of scientists and researchers. Before, I mean, it was a surprise that you were present. It was a surprise that you were present. Before we end the surprise that you were present, we agreed that we had a plan to support the student with support of the university. We agreed to this idea, and the idea is that we are working on it currently with the Office of Science and Science. وإن شاء الله راح نضيف إمكانيات متميزة لهذا المستنبت الذكي بحيث يدار بشكل كامل والداتا ما تترفع بشكل كامل على الإنترنت ويعني إن شاء الله عندنا خطوات يكون نكون انطلاقة في الجامعة التكنولوجية لمبادرة أتمتة لبعض المشاريع فهي باي ذا واي سبحان الله يعني على النيات جت محاضرة حضرتك أنا أود أن أشكرك الشكر الجزيل وأشكر الدكتور سليم خليفة اللي ساعدنا بتنظيم والتواصل مع حضرتك في إعداد هذه المحاضرة المتميزة أشكر الجميع وأشكر كل من حضر اسمحوا لي أن أنهي تسجيل محاضرة اليوم وأن